Hello and good afternoon from South Cambridge here in the United Kingdom from myself and Des seamlessly picked them up. The original Starlink router version 1000. The one that was sent up on a drone, never updated and still has his moustache. That is Des indeed. Today we're going to be talking about Starlink two years in and how it's been, how it performs. Who's a form? I've actually got a little list here because it's been such a while since I've done these things. So first thing I'm going to touch on is performance stability. Next thing's going to be cost. And who is Starlink best for? And then I have a slight warning about a company called Vinaeus. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Yes, it's wonderful to be back. Talking about Starlink, there's so many videos out there across YouTube speaking about Starlink. And of course, it varies from country to country, but I'm gonna share my experience of what it's been like for the last two years, especially the last couple of months since we've had it uh, during the beta test of 2021, March 2021 to be exact. So stability and performance, you can see the speed tests are running there. One thing I will say about performance is Performance has got worse in terms of speed, but not in terms of ping and overall stability. So it is not as fast for uploads anymore. They do not touch the crazy heights that they once did during those initial speed tests, which were roughly 64 plus megabits per second. And download speeds, well, they have never got up close near that 400 mark, which we had one time on a video, uh, never got up there again. Now it sits anywhere between 100 and 300, if I'm lucky. However, it does say in Starlink's terms and conditions, that is what you should expect, between 100 and 150, really. So for a remote worker, it's still really, really good, better than fiber to cabinet. I would say that gaming is still an issue without a doubt. I do rage when I play FIFA online and I did try and show some FIFA online before and since then my game has got much better, I think. And competitive gameplay is rubbish, quite simply. You get tons of lag when you don't need it. I'm not saying you ever need lag, but you do, I do struggle where my players will glitch all over the pitch, etc. Of course, you don't notice that on normal streaming or any other sort of mobile games or anything like that. But when it comes to console gaming, if you're doing it competitively, Starlink is not the answer. You're best off with probably fiber to cabinet, like anything that has a decent ping and is stable. Starlink can't offer that. Ping currently sits around 20 to 50, and it does fluctuate quite a bit. There's definitely a lot less outages than there used to be. We would get significant dropouts for prolonged periods of time. There's been one or two maybe global ones. I think somebody pressed the wrong button somewhere again and everything went off. But apart from that, it is not that bad. While I'm talking about performance stability, there is a better dish out there. And I made an inquiry about it online uh, uh, and asked, could I upgrade mine? And they actually phoned me, Starlink gave me a call and talk me through the new dish. Uh, here it is here. So it's a high performance dish with a better spec. And they told me that it would perform better than my round dish, the original dish, but at a significant cost, which I could not justify. So I, I didn't go with it. I could have had it on a 30 day money back guarantee thing and tried it and run them side by side. But quite simply, I didn't want to waste postage and packaging and etc. purely just to run it, which it might run slightly better ping. I don't know. Actually, I don't think it would. It might run faster overall, more more stable in that term. But I think ping is still be the same. Ultimately, it's still got to, you know, do the spacey type stuff. So I didn't do it. I'm stuck with version one, which I'm, I'm more than happy with. Now, let's move on to costs. So overall, my costs are about £2,600 and hopefully... My wife doesn't watch this. Oh no, she'll be thanking me because we have been able to do video conferences, work from home, etc. So it's not that bad. But if you break that down and compare it to a cheaper fiber to premises or a fiber to cabinet, 
Well, it, it, it's pointless. It's they, they are a lot cheaper. However, Starlink are bringing the price down. And I did see a message come through that they're going to drop the UK price, I think, to £65. So that's went down from the original £89 that I was paying. And it's going to drop. Also, the equipment has dropped too, as you can see here. So who is Starlink really for? Well, it's not for people that can get fiber to premises or 5G. I was recently in France and I had the pleasure of testing a 5G network and it ran over a gig and I was blown away by it. 600 upload and uh, or just over a gig and I, it, it, it was amazing. Even the ping was sitting around, I don't know, 15. So that is not bad. If you have access to anything else other than fiber to cabinet and you need a faster download and faster upload speed, then that's what you take. Starlink is for those people who have no access to anything outside of fiber to cabinet and are not competitive gamers. I still think and believe you can competitively game on fiber to cabinet. But there are limitations with fiber to cabinet, i.e. your upload. Fiber to premises, on the other hand, is the way forward, I think, for the time being. It cannot, uh, well, Starlink can't compete with it. It's, it's impossible. It's not designed for that. It's designed for those who maybe live remotely and cannot access a, an infrastructure. Now, that brings me on very nicely to a company called Vineas, who last year promised to bring full fiber premises to us. We are slightly remote. We're not massively remote in the countryside. We, we live on a road, main road, well, rough sort of semi-main road that runs out of a small village towards another town. And this fiber to premises company came in and they were promoting their stuff. And I was really excited by it. There was loads of uproar in the village where they were digging up roads and stuff like that. And I was trying to reassure people say, you know, no, just stick with it. It'll be really good. And first things, a lot of lines sold and they left us out of the build. So I still have Starlink, uh, slightly disappointed with them and we were relying on them to install our business premises as well for fire. We have a, we've got some stuff happens up here in terms of weddings and events and they let us down. So they're probably really good. They probably do provide a good service, but for a communication company, their communication kind of sucks. So if you have clicked on this because it's tagged with finesse or whatever, just be mindful. Uh, don't hold your breath until it's installed. Uh, that, that's all I'm saying on that. So there you go. There you have it. That is the update on Starlink. It still runs beautifully except for competitive gaming and it does everything it should in terms of internet. So whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a good one and I will catch you later.